of the stairs. You said the top of the stairs, right? Top of the stairs, Mr. Boy. We're live, by the way. We're live? On Facebook. All right. Hold on, I'm getting this on Instagram. Mitch, I'm all about this new shirt I got on today, man. Hashtag this no chase. Hashtag yeah. no chase shirts are in the building. Hold on. Oh, Instagram. <clears throat> and we are live. What's going on, everyone? Shock Therapy. Coming to you live with our Shock Therapy Thursday show. The boys are all jamming away. And Mitch, we got something super cool in store. I what, are we, what, are we, we do. what are we talking about? We're talking about some good stuff. I'm not gonna steal it from Justin. I'm gonna let him, let him give you guys the rundown here. Justin, what's going on, brother? Hi, guys. Bro um, what are we doing today? Jesus, I forgot. I'm we didn't talk about it much, did we? We did. Um, we're gonna go over some travel. Travel, like more travel, less travel, good travel, bad travel. Where are you traveling today? Oh, I don't know. Airlines are closed. We're not traveling anywhere. I was gonna say, not much travel going on right now. <laughs> I know. Music's good. We got 80s hair band. Something different. I think going on yeah. in the background. A little Def Leppard. Thank you, Chase. Chase actually has a new t-shirt. I would like to show you. Take a look at this, guys. Woo! As many as you want, baby. Send yeah. me in the DMs, hit me up, I'll send them your way. This is why day. we don't have Chase in front of the camera. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if you guys want a shirt, we'll send you a hashtag no chase shirt. I still don't have any good applications for guys to take over his spot, so why don't you guys send that? Actually, we have. That brings up one good thing. We are hiring. I know like two weeks ago we said, not hiring well, we need a lot of help. So we are hiring inside the office, we're hiring for techs, we're hiring for customer service, shipping, and we are also hiring for all installation. So send your applications to jobs at shocktherapist.com. Do not call us. Email your application to jobs at shocktherapist.com. All right, let's get to it, travel stuff. The reason we're talking about it today is because a couple people had asked some questions about how you measure it, um, how do you figure it? What's good? What's bad? And somebody asked about, do you figure tire squish when you're figuring uh, travel numbers? Well, that was kind of a weird thing to me. I never really heard somebody say it that way, but it kind of sparked something in my mind, and that is that when you do squish a tire, it tends to drop the car closer to the ground, and that can affect how the travel is working or how much travel you have, if it drags the ground earlier or not. So we're gonna show you a little bit about that. So right here, we've got an X3, um, just happens to be in the shop for the day. So I appreciate this customer letting us run it through its paces. All we've done is taken the shock and removed the coil spring from the system so we can cycle this car all the way up and all the way down. Roughly right now, we're sitting at ride height so this car is 17 and a half inches off the ground. Might be a hair, hair high. Actually, it's probably about right because this has 32s on it. Yeah, it's pretty close. So factory X3 has a 30, uh, RS has a, a 30 inch tire on it. So this has 32s. That means that it is a two inch taller tire than stock, which means that the car is going to sit one inch higher off the ground because of the tire, both ride height and also fully compressed. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and drop this car all the way to the ground. Mitch is gonna do that really quick for us. Um, Chase, why don't you uh, put that camera on the ground so you guys can see what we're dealing with. This is bone stock, nothing's been changed. <clears throat> there it is. This car is now sitting on the shock, completely bottomed out. This is what you would get in factory form for ground clearance. This is actually really bad. Um, ground clearance in most off-road vehicles should be set between three and four inches on a lightweight car and usually four to six inches on big stuff like class ones, um, you know, limited trucks, things like that. We want more ground clearance. Uh, the reason is two things. One, when you bottom the car out, usually you're not bottoming it out on a perfectly flat surface. There's rocks. So if you've only got one inch of ground clearance, you're going to smack every rock there. Two, the tire, once you bottom the car out, the only travel or the only suspension left in the car is the sidewall. This sidewall on this one is about nine inches tall. The sidewall now will squish down. And this might be what someone was asking us about squish but that sidewall is going to compress. 
When it compresses, you lose ground clearance. So this is why it's really important to manage your air pressures in tires, especially in the sand, and why we suggest that sand tires are always in the, uh, say, 10 to 14 inch air uh, pounds air pressure in the tire range because when you run tire pressures down the six or seven pound range and you bottom the car out in the sand then it just squishes the sidewall with no resistance and you drag the skid plate everywhere you go. Actually, Mitch, take the tension off that. I'm gonna hop up in there. <clears throat> tension, okay, cool. Watch this. Can I move the tire enough? Probably not. Never mind. What I was trying to do is jump on the car and show you that I can squish the sidewall of this tire down to where I can just smack that skid plate on the ground. But when you get momentum in tire, or momentum and, and you know, mile an hour thrown at this, I guarantee you that you'll be dragging skid plate all the time. Why am I showing you this? Because this is how the factory set it up. The reason that the factory has no ground clearance when it's completely bottomed out is because travel numbers sell units. If you are in the market for a sport UTV and you're looking at a Polaris or Can-Am or anybody's car and one's got 20 inches of wheel travel and one's got 24 inches of wheel travel, well, you start thinking pretty quick, I want more wheel travel, it's gonna ride better, right? Well, it's not really the truth. This car has 24 inches of advertised wheel travel. Factory. I think it does, right? It's not 22, 24. 24. So they advertise 24 inches. They're doing that with no ground clearance. If I took this 32 inch tire off here and put a 30 back on it, and we're dragging the skid plate when it's bottomed out, it should have three inches of ground clearance when it's bottomed out. Maybe four. So if they put the ground clearance in it that's needed, then a Can-Am has honestly 20 inches of usable travel with ground clearance figured in there and they wouldn't sell as many units. So it's a bit of a marketing ploy to make sure that we have, we're winning the travel races, right? The UTV manufacturers want to win that category. They want to have the most horsepower so that you buy these units. The honest truth though is, it's better to have a perfect 18 to 20 inches of wheel travel than a non-perfect 24, 26 inches of wheel travel. One other point I can tell you is in our race car, which is also a Can-Am, we limit it so that we have the ground clearance we need. That car's set up with four inches of ground clearance, and uh, we choke the travel up to 18 or 19 inches to get that. Car works perfect, works great in races. We don't drag the skid plate, we don't destroy the frame on the bottom of the car because we have that adequate ground clearance. Um, I guess in general, more travel is not more better if I can say it that way. It's not the amount of travel you have, baby. It's how you use it, yeah. Hashtag no chase. Please, <laughs> you guys, help me out with this so I can, <laughs> I'll send you shirts and get Chase out. Um, <laughs> I, I, you know what, I'm kind of getting sidetracked a little bit. Mitch, let's, what do you uh, got? Let's lift it up and let's talk a little bit about the axle. Okay, axle let's go ahead that. and lift the car up, Mitch. You got any questions in the meantime? Um, a couple here, actually, uh, let's see. Well, one was actually about the CV. Uh, Dino Jet Matt said, what up? Uh, Brandon <coughs> Marset, I just bought a 2019 X3 XMR. Can you tell me if I order the springs from you, how much ground clearance can I expect to gain? Okay, go ahead and lift this thing up. So as far as ground clearance on our spring kits, typically you're gonna get between one and three inches more ground clearance at ride height with our spring kits on that XMR. Um, that's about right into Mitch. Two to three inches? About yeah. two to three inches or so. Um, go up too high, stop. Now come back down until the tire touches, okay? Good, stop, that's good. All right, you guys, so uh, I think I, I answered your question about the springs and Yeah, two to three inches that. of ground clearance. Two to three inches of more gr of ground clearance you're going to gain. Now wait, I gotta clarify, that's not ground clearance completely bottomed out because we're not changing the geometry of the car. That's ground clearance at ride height. So you're gonna gain two to three inches of ride height with our spring kit. It's not gonna affect how the geometry was originally designed. So clarify that. Yep. Now, Perfect. looking at this all the way maxed out, 24 inches. Now, that roughly is how you measure travel. Cycle the car all the way extended, all the way drooped out, 
and you've got a number that's accurate. Another way you can measure it is to keep the car in the same place and you can measure the hub right at the axle nut and cycle the suspension all the way up and down. That'll give you what your travel number is. Now, reality, this might be 24 inches, but it's 24 inches with no ground clearance. We would actually prefer to choke the system up and have the car sit off the ground a little bit. You'll never notice the, the three or four inches that were lost in a travel number, but what you will notice is you're not gonna bottom the car out as much. When you have this thing sitting at the bottom, uh, bottomed out and have no ground clearance, you have to stiffen the whole system up to keep it from getting there more often. So that means you're gonna end up with a suspension system that rides stiffer so that you don't bottom out. If you choke the, or, or set the shock system up or change shock mounts to allow for more ground clearance, you can set the system up more plush and more soft in the middle because you know it's not gonna bottom out because you have the ground clearance needed. So if you guys have watched any of the live feeds that Robbie's been doing on his new Speed UTV, he's probably touched upon how travel numbers are changed and manipulated by manufacturers. And the reason is it's true. You know, 24 inches of wheel travel. Well, you can buy one that's 20 inches of wheel travel and it has more ground clearance and ride better. So it's all about how that travel is set up. I'm gonna throw, well, Mitch, go ahead. I got, uh, I'm gonna talk about four seaters to so remind me on it. El Jefe Off-Road actually asked, are you gonna buy a Speed UTV? Um, believe it or not, we are going to get a Speed, speed UTV. Um, Robbie's probably dropping one off for, off for us to run and test. So. <laughs> If he didn't do that, I would probably be in line because number one, we want to test them, we want to develop parts on them, and we do that in conjunction with Robbie. So hopefully that answers. Yep. Two Four seaters. <clears throat> yes, thank you, Chase. Love Chase. Um, <laughs> two seater. We've got 24 inches of wheel travel roughly advertised on a four seater. Did you guys ever wonder why they advertise them at 22 inches? If any of you right this second can tell me why a four-seater has less travel than a two-seater, I'm gonna give you a shirt. I'll probably even throw in a hashtag no chase shirt. So I'm gonna give you about three minutes to come up with that. We're gonna go on to something Is this else. part of the, the stump Justin area? So the stump me thing really didn't happen today. We're talking about travel, <laughs> but well, we can do that on, on every live feed if you guys want. We <laughs> will be answering questions at the end of this for everyone who is waiting. Yep, so while this car is drooped out, I'm gonna show you what the limiting factor is when it comes to droop. So basically, what stops a UTV from having more droop, or in essence, more travel, is CV axle and CV angle. This angle right here on that CV and on the outside CV is a maximum angle, otherwise these CVs tend to blow up. You don't want to over angle CVs, it's a problem. This one right here, about 32, 32 and a half degrees, somewhere around there. Okay, I believe 34 or 33 degrees is the max. Uh, this might be sitting on the ground a little bit right this second. And 34 degrees on a stock CV tends to blow them up and have binding issues. The only limiting factor on UTVs is CV axle. If you guys get a long travel kit and it gives you more travel, the reason it does that is because it gets wider. And if this tire is pushed out, then the tire travels farther down and farther up. It does not actually travel farther down and farther up as far as CV axle is concerned. It only moves farther because it's wider. You can't allow UTVs to droop any farther than factory. They are maxing out the CV angle because they want the travel number to sell these things in the market. They're not leaving any free degrees on the table for you to pick up because you designed it any better. Um, you can't change shock locations and gain travel. The limiting factor is CV angle, that's it. So unless you magically relocate the trans, magically relocate the hub, and change the geometry completely, you're not gonna change anything about it. Um, one thing that's helpful, because these cars typically are set up with no ground clearance, a taller tire. As you run a taller tire, the ground clearance gets higher when it's bottomed out. You'll bottom the car out less, we can set the suspension up a little bit softer, and it will ride better. So hopefully all those things make sense. Mitch, what do you got? I got three responses to your question about the four-seater. Okay, four three responses. Shoot. Uh, Friar88 said, does the geometry train change with the longer wheelbase? Nope. Uh, Goose Diesel, bigger bump stop for extra weight. And Mumbler, longer wheelbase limits. 
Okay, so wheelbase does not change the geometry in that car. Um, you said longer wheelbase limits was the last one. That is not. Bigger it. bump stops. And for the extra person that weight. was in the middle, what was his name? Uh, that's Goose Diesel. Goose Diesel. So you're very close with bump stops, but you're not correct. That, um, is, that is pretty close. It is very, very close. <laughs> um, actually, Mitch, you want to go grab a loop? Yeah. Thank you. So Mitch will grab the answer for you guys. If you guys, you guys got about 30 seconds to come up with the right answer. Otherwise, no one gets a shirt for this. I will tell you this. The difference between a two-seater and a four-seater is strictly adding ground clearance. Uh, no. Chapo came in the room. What do you got, okay. Ernesto? He yeah, said Ch Chapo Shock said, Islet. don't forget me, Shock Islet. Mm -hmm. Oh, boom, <laughs> Ernesto nailed it. All right. Here is a lower Shock Islet, and I'll show you where that goes. That replaces a two-seater Islet. Now, what does longer do? This is a little bit confusing, but Ernesto's right. A lower loop on these actually adds to the ground clearance in the car by removing a total of about two inches of, well, one inch. About an inch, yeah. One inch of shock shaft travel. So this loop, if you look inside, see how deep that is? My finger goes all the way in there. This loop actually slides over that shaft. The shaft goes down inside of it. So this loop, all it does is it was raising the perch that has the bump stop on it. So it doesn't change anything else. It just raises the bump stop. Well, if the bump stop's higher, then this thing bottoms out sooner. And if it bottoms out sooner, you end up with more ground clearance when it's bottomed out. Why did the factory do this? Well, certainly not to sell units, but they understand that you can't run a car with no ground clearance when it weighs more. So a longer wheelbase car, heavier car, more people in it because of the weight they were trying to get some ground clearance so they don't just drag the skid plate. Someone went live. Yeah, Chase got someone we live. We got Ernesto. What's going on, brother? Ernesto, how's it going, buddy? What's up, guys? Another day, another live feed. Hey, man, how do you know all of our dirty little secrets? Oh, uh, you know, I, I know the mastermind behind it all. <laughs> <laughs> That's Can-Am in this case, Ernesto, but thank you. True, 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 but knowing it's because of you. Thank you, buddy, I appreciate that. So if you guys don't know, Ernesto runs the uh, Chopper Racing Team, super successful Can-Am race team, and uh, we manipulate this kind of stuff on all the race cars. This is one of the ways that we can get ground clearance that we need in a race car so we don't have issues. Yes, we're limiting travel, but remember, a better 16 inches, uh, I would rather have perfect 16 inches of wheel travel than a, than a crappy 24, so keep that in mind. How about you, Ernesto? You've probably seen both ends of it. Again. You've probably seen both ends of having, you know, the thing set up correctly from a ground clearance standpoint and not. You know, my main job is a navigator, so I'm, I'm in the right seat a lot, and I've had the, the fortune of being able to get in several cars, and I've seen the differences between different setups and, uh, you know, how plush a car is at 16 and 17, and GI protection and all the kind of different things that people do at different shops and different race teams. And uh, yes, uh, I'm gonna agree with you 100%. I'd rather have a hair less travel and have it work for the car more often and be easier on the rest of the components because the, the car's just running so much smoother over the, the average terrain. And uh, typically in our car, we'll, we'll slow down a little bit more for the big heavy G out stuff, uh, just to not hurt the car. And, uh, other cars that can go through that stuff a little bit faster but overall our cars take less abuse which i figure is a uh, i attribute that to the success of, of us having such a successful finishing rate so our car holds together and, and I, i'm definitely going to blame that on the, the suspension setup thanks to you guys thank you ernesto you guys have an awesome finishing rate that's due to your prep and knowledge um, i think you probably finish more races than just about any other team um, or have a better finishing rate overall for sure. I think you had some amazing stats the other day I saw. Yeah, 94. 94%? <laughs> I put 94 octane in my car. Chase, please. <laughs> no chase. <laughs> just, just, just when you feel the uh. need to comment, just don't. Hey, speaking okay. of, I'm going to send you out a shirt. Ernesto, make sure you uh, let me know your shirt size. I think I got some XLs for you. I might even have some children's shirts for uh, Chapo there. So I'll, set, I'll send him out some youth. <laughs> hey Ernesto, thanks for commenting, buddy. You got any questions while you're there? No, nope, nope, all good. 
Thank, thanks, man. Have a great day. We'll see you on the track. All right. So there, there actually was there was a question about how you get the four inches of ground travel. I think you kind of answered it with the loop there. So the lower loop is one way you can get uh, ground clearance. Uh, it's probably one of the easiest ways. In other ways, you can step the bump stop up even higher on the shaft. Um, in our case with the race car, we relocated uh, shock mounts, kind of changed the overall uh, positioning of everything. The idea was we could still use all the shock travel that we could possibly get and still have the ground clearance that we wanted. Uh, there's a lot of ways to do it to answer that question. Yeah. Got any more uh, before I show you a Turbo S? Yeah, a couple here. I, I want to do, uh, Goose Diesel said, I was close, shucks. I think we should send him a shirt because he was the closest. Yeah, everybody, Goose so. Diesel, that was pretty good, man. I mean, he didn't cover the details about it, but bump stop was ultimately what actually moves in this case once the loop moves it. Uh, let's do this one real quick and then we can move on to the, the Turbo S over right. there. Side-by-side uh, -side Compa George, will you benefit replacing the shock loop if you run a bigger tire to get longer travel? So um, changing the shock loop in this case, like the one I have in my hand, gives you less travel, but it gives you more ground clearance and that's actually a bigger benefit. When you throw a bigger tire on the car, you're not going to gain travel but what you will get is ground clearance, which is what we're trying to get with this loop, for instance. So yeah, I would suggest a uh, taller tire. Also, they ride better anyway. Typically, all these things are 32 inch tire now, and I would suggest running that. Behind us, behind Chase, here's a Turbo S. So we're not gonna give all the love, or in this case, maybe a little bit of hate on a Can-Am for travel. Uh, what we're gonna do is show you what a Turbo S does as it droops out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jack this car up and chase. I want you to be on the side of that tire. You guys watch this. The direction of this tire facing forward, compare it to the front tires. As this gets jacked up, watch that toe out. So this tire just did this as we jacked it up. The toe is changing as this cycle in rear travel is moving. Why is that? That's just because of the geometry of a Polaris design. It's always gonna have toe change because it doesn't have a third toe link to control that like a Can-Am does. So it might have better travel use and more ground clearance than a Can-Am, but it has its problems too. It's changing toe. Now what does that, what does that do? As that thing comes down and toes out, it's just like having bump steer in the front when you're steering this car and watching the tire go in and out. It gets squirrely. Now, pardon me dancing around trying to show you, but I, I get kind of animated with this stuff. So as the back tires toe out, the back of the car doesn't know where it's going. So it tries to choose which tire to follow, and it does that when it's in the whoop. So typically when the car's light, it's bouncing between it, wants to skate back and forth. That is one reason why a Turbo S in a two-seater is a bit squirrely in the whoops, as opposed to previous models or a Can-Am. The four-seat Turbo S is less squirrely, doesn't have any difference in the geometry, it's because the wheelbase makes that toe change feel less. But toe is a big deal too. So people have asked us in the past why Can-Ams have three links. Well, this center link, or toe link, got right here in the middle, it's bolted to the hub. It's actually not bolted to the arm. The reason is these hubs pivot on a Can-Am. The hubs pivot on an upper and lower joint. And that third tow link, as it travels down, is keeping it from towing out. It's keeping it from towing in, trying to keep the rear hub on a Can-Am straight. So Can-Ams tend to be a little bit more stable in the whoops because the tow doesn't change. Um, you know, that's not amazing or great. Uh, a Turbo S has toe change. It's not horrible or don't buy it. These are just little things that are important to know when you start feeling what a car does and you start comparing travel from one to the next. What do you got, Mitch? Uh, Chris Stilge asks, is that fixable on the Turbo S? No, the toe is not fixable. The reason is that the hub is bolted solidly to the arm and so you have no way of changing the toe through cycle. Uh, you would have to design a rear arm system like a Can-Am with the hub in a pivoting uh, style system and a third link. That's the only way you're going to get that toe fixed. Now, we thought about making shim kits for these because we didn't want to see that toe out at droop. And we would shim the hub inward 
So basically a shim would go between the hub and the arm and tow the car in. The only problem with that is, in order to make the tow zero at droop, we would have to tow it in about four inches at ride height. And everybody would kind of look at that with cross eyes and be pissed off and think that we didn't know what we were doing. Actually, let's measure this, Mitch. What do you got for tow on this? 44 and a quarter. Forty-six and a quarter. Two inches. Actually, forty-eight and a quarter. Sorry, wrong one. Forty-eight and a quarter. So that's exactly four inches towed out. At ride height, these things are towed zero, so it gains four inches as it droops out. Now, I'm not trying to bash all the UTV guys or manufacturers. That's not it. My goal is I want to show you that there's a big difference between perfect travel and not. Um, there's a difference between having ground clearance and not and how the car works because of it. It's a difference between having tow perfect and having tow in and out and why that car gets squirrely. Um, overall width change, that's a whole other subject we can go on for days. If they designed a better CV that would go past 33 degrees of CV angle and allowed you to droop the car farther, I don't think it would be better because as you start drooping the car even farther, the tires are coming in even narrower and now you're just scrubbing width as the car lands again and that's basically squirrely as well. Question? We got uh, Hayden Walker Howard wanting to go live. We'll see if we can get him connected. I got a bunch of questions too, Justice. Maybe we can oh, We follow got up Hayden. That. How's it going, buddy? What's going on, guys? Oh, another day. What do you got for us? Uh, nothing. No, I just was wondering how many hours of R&D do you guys put in one single product? Um, it depends on the product. So, for instance, on our billet race racks for Can-Ams, uh, we had we probably designed that over a two month period we tested that for over a year we ran it on a couple of race teams for six months and then we brought came out with that so that was about a year and a half uh, a little short of two years on that but when it comes to spring kits and internal shock work uh, maybe something simpler than a rack uh, spring kits we'll do i would say about a month um, we'll throw on what we like or get it to where we like it and then we'll change it for weight. We'll add weight to the car. We'll go to the mountains, we'll go to the dunes, and we'll test it to all those spots. And we try to do that over a one to two month period on all new models. Sometimes we're a lot later than that because we're kind of busy and we can't get to every one of them as, as fast as possible. Valving, we might take as much as six months. Um, our KRX, we've had since uh, Baja 500 last year. Yep. yep. Shit, so that means um, we've got had that car for a year. And we're just now coming out with the spring and internal valving for that car because we spent that much time developing it. So everyone's different. Um, I would say on the short side, two months. On the long side, two years. Um, how, many, how many engineers do you guys have working for you guys? So uh, we've got myself. Um, we've got Jason Kraus in the CNC shop. Um, Ernie and Mitch are not engineers, but I think they could be qualified as one with the School of Hard Knocks that they've actually gone through. <laughs> So uh, I would say uh, uh, maybe four, and uh, maybe two of us with paperwork. Nice, nice, cool. Awesome, guys, I appreciate it, thank you. Thanks for signing in. Make sure you give us a shirt size and a color so Chase can actually do his job and send you a shirt today. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> All right, All right. let's get caught up on some of these. I got a bunch for you, Justin. Um, 2020 General 1004 seater, looking for more ground clearance, Super ATV arms or HCR long arm. What shock setup, your springs or new shocks? You were looking for my car too, it's outside, Justin. Oh really, You're the, we don't have any Yamaha's I didn't appreciate here, it that you put it out there. I'm gonna let it slide this Chase, one time. The General is not even my car. <laughs> <laughs> That's my wife's car. So don't even talk like you own that thing right now. Oh, but what are we you don't have any Yamahas here for you to drool over, so I'm sorry, <laughs> but no. I'm sorry, what was the question? Uh, uh, general, the, uh, hashtag right no chase. Like Thank that. Chase. Yeah, hashtag no chase. Uh, so super ATV arms, HCR long arm, what shock setup, your springs right. or any shocks? So ride height, um, I would do a spring kit. Um, our spring kit, obviously I'm a little partial. That's gonna give you about uh, two inches more ride height uh, with just the spring kit. Tire, you can put a 30 on it without having any issue. You can do a 32 with an offset arm. So tire height would obviously give you more uh, ground clearance. If you put portals on it, you're gonna get a pile of ground, ground clearance, but the drivability goes, goes away completely. So I would stop short of that unless you're gonna drive the car like 30 mile an hour or slower. 
and never want to run it very hard at all. That would be the only time I'd tell you put a portal on. Perfect. Uh, Chris underscore J 2020. have a 17 XP 1000 Walker Evans suspension. Difference in your ride improvement system versus buying a Fox or King Shock for the car. On an XP 17? XP 17 XP 1000. Okay, so uh, walkers, I would say our work with uh, spring and internal shock work is about a 70 to 80 percent um, ride improvement or, or um, ride quality change. Um, huge for 15 to 1800 bucks. Um, if you buy a set of Foxes or you buy a set of Kings and bolt them on out of the box, they're probably going to be a 40 or 50 percent improvement. They still need to be tuned to get the thing to have the most potential possible. So we tune Kings all day long. Once we're done with Kings, then I think they're right about the same ride quality as a Walker. The only thing is that the Kings are bigger, so they will go longer without having fade issues. So if you guys are just tuning in, we've talked about good travel versus bad, ground clearance versus more or less ground clearance, toe change throughout cycle. So when you guys are looking at travel numbers on the UTVs, don't be sold 100% on buying the one that has the most travel. It may not be the best. So do some research on that stuff would be a really good idea. More Mitch? Oh yeah, uh, Alver zero underscore 90. I have a DS and widened it to make it a 72. Can I run the DS shocks or do I need to go to XRS shocks? You can't run the DS shocks if you've converted a DS to RS on suspension. It will not work. There is no conversion for the shock. You have to buy RS shocks. 710 oil wait, 017. Wait, wait, back on that. You need to make sure that you've converted the axle and CV. You cannot run the DS CV with a longer axle. That CV does not have the same degree uh, max and you will blow the CV up. You need to make sure if you've converted the arm to RS that you have RS, CV, and axle too. Good point. Uh, 710 oil 017, do you ship to Canada? Yes, we ship to Canada like on a daily basis. So uh, if you want to buy product, you can do that on the site and all the shipping is figured out for you right in front of you. That's if you kind want of to have shocks question. done, if, uh, if you want to have the shocks done, then it may not pencil out. Sometimes the import cost for shocks to us and we do the work and send it back can make it not worth it. You have to look that look into that yourself and see if it is. If not, a lot of things, a lot of times what we'll do is we'll buy a brand new set of shocks, do the work, send them to you, and you sell yours locally. And that's not, uh, you can recover a lot of the cost there. We do that a lot for Australia, South Africa, uh, England, Russia, Hungary, Dominican, Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, so Philippines, um, two in China, Dubai, about 50 in Dubai. So we get around and usually we buy a new set and ship direct. Uh, Autopilot MT, does the Pro XP tow in like the Turbo S? The Pro XP does tow in like the Turbo S. It does not tow in four inches. It tows in about three, so it's a little bit better. I will tell you this though, you can't feel it. Um, especially in the four-seater, it's not even noticeable. On a two-seater, yeah, actually, we, we both commented on that, on Mitch, when, when we first tested that car. Yeah, we it did. It was a bit squirrely. We did. Yeah, felt like it was all over the place. Yeah, and it kind of acted like the car was on, on ice a little bit through the whoops uh, at high speed. Um, so two-seater more effective than the four. Uh, Chris, Chris Stilge again, can you adapt the Maverick X3 rear arms and hubs to the Turbo S? <laughs> That's good. That's an interesting one. Oh, that's a really good question, man. Um, if you guys didn't hear that, can you do Can-Am rear hub and arm assembly on a Turbo S? Yeah. Yeah, you could. I mean, I haven't, seen it done. <laughs> I haven't seen it done. I haven't seen it done. It'd be a lot of fabrication, but yeah, you could. I mean, there's a lot of guys building arms. We could certainly, um, if we wanted to, build our own arm that did that. We're not going to do it for you. We just do our own fab work. But maybe you can contact a good long travel company like uh, the guys we always mention that we work with and see if they're interested. It's going to be a big project. <laughs> he says, I win. <laughs> <laughs> what would you even call that? Yeah. Um, if you're out of questions, we're out. I got a bunch, but I think uh, if you guys have more, send them to the DM. We'll make sure we can answer. I do want to end on this one right here. I thought it was really good, Justin. Uh, Ali Ale 09 not only do you guys know what you guys are doing, I'm amazed at your guys' customer service. It's also nice seeing owners grind with their employees. Right on, man. Thank you so much for even mentioning that. Um, we work really hard at it. Um, sometimes we get blown up on media for not answering our phone. That is absolutely not the case. We have five people here, five people that answer the phones. And a lot of times they are just inundated 
and we're doing the best we can. We always call people back. Thanks for mentioning that we do a good job of it. We try really hard. Plus, um, I like all the guys that work here. We're kind of friends. Except Steve. Except for Chase, actually. <laughs> I take that back. No Chase, but Steve's good. Uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but Steve and I actually have a handshake. What's up, buddy? There it is. Must have played baseball. There is no HR department around here. Clearly, it would <laughs> never work. Um, any more questions? Let's get out of here. All right, let's, uh, let's end it on that one there, Justin. All right, we're gone. Let's wrap this up, you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Suspension goods and bads is more better. You guys decide. Um, if you have any questions about our products, call us at 623-217-4959. If you want to buy anything, go to our website, shocktherapist.com. We will see you next Tuesday. And send us your applications, people. That's right. Job applications. Jobs at Shock Therapist.